Following up on the footsteps of the Faux Filter Foundation, Huda Beauty has released a new complexion product. Now on July 2nd, both on the brand's website as well as online at Sephora, Huda Beauty's Easy Loose Baking and Setting Powder is now available. I received a very generous amount of the powder from my girlfriend who is on the brand's PR list. So she was able to provide all of this for me. This is a lot. I don't want to tip it so it falls over. So thank you very much, Jennifer, for that. There are eight shades available in the uh, Loose Bake Setting Powder. That's It has a really long title, so I'm just going to state Baking Loose Powder or Baking Powder. Again, there's eight shades, and it's going to be for a variety of skin tones. So you have a very pale shade, a very white shade for very fair skin tones, and then it starts to go down in the uh, skin tone tone spectrum. So if you have darker skin like tan skin, medium skin tones, you're going to have that beige tone, more of like a peachy tone shade. When you start coming down to my shade, here's where we look at more of a darker shade of yellow. And then again, as you go down the darker end of the spectrum, we're going to start seeing some tones of brown, a little bit of red added to it. I did take a look at the ingredients online. It's available if you're interested. The first ingredient is top. So some people might have a sensitivity to that. Some people like it. Some people don't particularly care for it. Doesn't have any parabens in it. I noticed there was a rice starch in it, which would help with the oil control. And it also contains vitamin E, which is going to offer that softening touch to it. Not only the softening touch to the actual powder, but how it feels on your skin. Very lightweight, very airy. There also is a easy bake and dual ended baking brush. So if you wanted a brush to assist you as far as the cut of the hairs, as far as to apply the powder underneath your eyes, uh, let's say in your smile lines, again, wherever you're going to be baking and then you flip it over and brush the powder away between the three to five minutes as recommended, you can purchase that as well. I have a quick statement I want to read to you from Huda that she was stating back to Allure Magazine in reference to why she wanted the actual baking powder on the market. She states that despite the fact that the shade range could be bigger, so she might be adding more additional shades past the eight, we'll obviously take a look at that in the future, she feels that the Easy Bake is a game changer for our makeup routine. She's always felt that baking is one of the biggest game changers for anyone's routine, even if you're not a cake face like me. So I guess she really likes to pack on her makeup. And she states that many people are scared to try the baking method, which is why she wanted to make the baking powder foolproof. Also with the Easy Bake Powder, you can just use it to set your foundation. You can use it again to remove any type of shine just to kind of mattify, lightly mattify your face. It's a kind of a powder that you can, well it is, it's a powder I feel that you can use in whatever manner that would suit your makeup routine. The only shade that I was interested in within all the eight shades is Kunafa. I believe I'm stating it right because I think of Mufasa, Lion King, which I watch quite often. First couple times I use Kunafa on my face, what I was just doing is seeing as far as setting my, my foundation, again, just applying it on my bare skin, underneath my eyes, but not baking. I wasn't gonna be baking yet. I had some time and I wanted to film some clips for you, but it really was just to see how it was going to feel on my skin. It disappears into my skin tone. So Kunafa is the shade for me, for my medium dark, warm undertone. The warm yellow tone of the powder, it does not change the color of my concealer. It does not change the color of whatever foundation I'm using. Again, it just blends right in and it sets. It pretty much does what it's supposed to do. When I first opened up the uh, container of my sample, the first thing that hit me in the nose, I'm going to open it up right now, is the scent. The scent reminds me of the Faux Filter Foundation very much like it. I would say it's probably neck and neck because my shade was chocolate mousse. I can't remember. It smells like that. However, the smell of the foundation was extremely overpowering and it lingered. We're talking throughout the day, afternoon, it was still whizzing by my nose. 
but there's a difference with this powder. The scent is less. It's, it's definitely turned down a notch. However, once applied to my face, I didn't smell it anymore. If you are sensitive to scents and you want no part of that at all, then definitely keep that in mind. The smell is very, very close to the foundation uh, within the brand. But if you don't mind that the smell completely evaporates, then there's, you know, that benefit right there. And I do see that as a benefit because if that smell lingered on my face, no, I would not have been touching this powder again. Then came the baking part, which I was dreading because I was like, I'm gonna have to walk around all day with caked under eyes, but I wanted to, uh, you know, of course, film the clips and show you what it would look like at the end of the day and some good close-ups of underneath the eyes. So again, the direction state, three to five minutes. And I left it on for seven minutes because I was doing other stuff. So I'm gonna show you this at first, as expected. The the little like um, powder kind of doing like how it looks when it's you know exposed to air and, and moisture underneath the eyes, how it just starts to settle right here. And a lot more on my uh, under eye on my right eye. So of course I'm like, oh yes, when I brush away I'm gonna have this huge like patch there I was just expecting the worst because again I don't bake was I surprised this powder is like oh you want to talk mess on me I show you so as you can see I take the brush and I brush it away and there's nothing there but my skin my concealer is set and it does not look dry at all. The vitamin E is doing its job. Here's a really close up shot, which I'm warning you, because if you don't like to look up people's eyeballs and see all kind of stuff up there, just go ahead and uh, click out for a quick second, but come back. So I'm showing right underneath. I pull down my eyes, look up to show you there is no powder in my fine lines. There is nothing caked. It is smooth as can be. It's a powder to bake with if I wanted to, which I'm not. <laughs> I'm gonna tell like it is, even though it works to bake with, that's just not my routine. I don't even wanna get into the habit of it. So I'm just gonna to continue to use it to set foundation and that's it. I'll just put it boop boop, brush it off and I'm done. But at least we know, right? It's a powder now that you can bake with without any type of cakiness. Well, maybe if you probably packed half the uh, container on your face, but I think I did a healthy amount where I was satisfied. It's smooth. So the claims for that is accurate as far as I'm concerned. It's 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time where I live, and this is how the powder looks from a full day's wear. So just wanted to kind of show you that. I do have it all over my face, and then again, I do have it in my um, setting my concealer. So I'm pleased with the overall claims of the Easy Bake Powder. It is not drying. This is my opinion. It's not drying. It doesn't cake. It does smooth out the area it's pretty much a loose powder that you can use like I stated before various methods depending on your own personal makeup routine and it's going to perform well which is actually what its purpose is as far as a baking method so let's say if that's all you do in your makeup routine, at least you know it's gonna do a good job at that. Now that that's all said and done, I just want to touch base on the actual powder itself and the uh, statements that have been circulating within social media and so forth that the brand is uh, copying a indie brand as far as the loose powder itself. I have my own opinions on that. I hate to put this disclaimer in here, but I feel that it's necessary. Keep in mind as the viewer, we're all gonna have different opinions. This is my opinion, of course, which could be different from yours, and it's okay to be different. Also with my personality itself, I can read, I can look at a lot of different uh, controversies and statements, but I still form my own conclusion. I still will do my own research. I will still seek out on my own, start to kind of drill down and look at the facts or what I feel is the facts and base my opinion based on that. 
also based on history and patterns. So that is where my opinion is coming from. First off, I want to talk about the actual packaging because it's what I stated in the faux filter foundation review I already have reviewed for Huda Beauty. The foundation bottle, I did not like. I didn't like all that whole jaggedness, the cut, the, the hard edges. I see that as an edgy look for a brand. And when I think of Huda herself, I see something something someone larger than life well actually it's kind of like maybe two different people when you look at Huda herself the social media presence can be a whole different look versus probably where she she, she may not even be like that in real life but based on what I see uh, from a social media perspective she seems very glamorous very luxurious larger than life the bottle that whole jaggedness the cut the cheap looking plastic for the price tag for the foundation it didn't match up to that luxurious high-end brand that has become known for Huda Beauty's brand. One could state that Huda has copied Maybelline's Fit Me Loose Powder because her packaging of the baked powder looks exactly like this. So that's the first thing. Is that the truth? We don't know. The only one who really knows it is the brand and of course Hooter herself. But looking at her packaging, it looks exactly like that. That's fact number one, I can state. I don't even probably wanna do the numbers because I'll probably forget and get lost. But that's the first thing I noticed, Maybelline. That's what came in my mind. Second factor is the actual campaign itself. When you think about baking powder, and this is me, when I think about a, a baking powder, the first thing that comes to mind is the kitchen. Because the word is baking, you're baking in the kitchen, you're baking that term, baking with your makeup. They go in correlation, like ham and eggs, pork and beans, peanut butter and jelly. They go together. Therefore, the correlation is so strong together that's why when I look at the campaign pictures and the actual marketing for the Easy Bake Powder, I expect to see it in a kitchen. I expect to see a baking theme. You can argue that Huda's uh, style, let's say looking at her previous packaging, I have the rose gold or rose edition package. There's nothing on There's nothing on mine. So I don't have any desert theme here. Here is the next eyeshadow palette, the Desert Dust. Now this has this whole Moroccan, or I don't even say Moroccan, her culture right here. I just thought of Fenty, excuse me, um, with the, um, I'm gonna mess all this up. So this is the jewelry and you know the, the whole Arabian Nights, Arabian, that's what I'm trying to think of, the whole Arabian Nights vibe. So I personally don't get a desert out of it. Well, it says desert in the theme, but because I know Huda's culture and her background, yeah, you can think about her um, Iran, the desert, Middle East, all that you know that, that goes together the desert so let's look at the baked powder how would you want to see the baking powder in her culture her desert theme of her brand if that really is the theme of her brand because to be honest I don't think the brand even knows what the theme is because I as the customer as the viewer I'm still puzzled about what the brand's actual image is because it seems to change and flip-flop with every new product that comes out. So let's go back to the baking powder. How can you put the baking powder in a marketing campaign with say the desert? Is she supposed to be walking down the desert? You know, the, the sand's going up and the baking powder is all flowing. I mean, how is that in correlation to the desert? There's no correlation between the two. So I would not expect, let's say for example, Huda holding her holding her container, sorry that was my phone, holding her container of her baking powder standing in the middle of the desert with the sand going up there. I would have looked at that and said, what, what is this? Again, this doesn't make sense. That's what I would have said to myself. So of course it makes sense to put her in the kitchen. However, this is what I would have recommend. And if anyone takes my idea, again, with the whole image of, and this is me feeling that Huda is luxurious and glamorous. And again, you're trying to make the brand appear to be high end. 
And let's say we want to bring in that desert theme, Arabian, her culture. I would have loved to have seen images of, I mean, I think of Sex in the City, the movie, where they go to the Abu Dhabi and the hotel kitchen. Oh my goodness, and they're sweet. Just this amazing, beautiful, luxurious, beyond your wildest dreams kitchen with an oven that would have made me go, oh my gosh, I'm going to faint. I can't wait to bake in there. So I would have loved to have seen the image of that type of a kitchen. But then you want to put Huda in the kitchen. Again, thinking of her being luxurious and glamorous. I see her in red lipstick, her hair big, big rollers out. Hair is huge. Black, beautiful, luxurious dress dripping in diamonds. Now she can, let's pretend this is her container. She could be holding the container in there, but this is what I see. I see a maid standing next to her. Okay. I see the maid holding also the uh, container. Maybe she's the one baking. She's holding the bowl. Put, put in it like this. I don't see Huda baking. I see Huda hires someone to bake. That would have been a great campaign to show high-end brand. Huda herself is luxurious, high class, this glamorous kitchen. She could be even, you know, standing over the maid as the maid is mixing with the bowl and the eggs. And she can either be like, you know, coy with sticking her finger in the bowl. We all do that, you know, to taste the batter. Or she's holding the powder. But she looks glamorous. She looks you know, like a kept woman. That is what I see, Huda. And I don't think people would have had an issue with stating that Huda is copying off another very popular indie makeup brand. That whole, and the entire theme is uh, baking, which is Beauty Bakery. I don't think anyone probably would have had an issue if it was maybe that different direction. My idea my idea, Huda, I will be watching. But that's just something I think of. Now, let's look at some facts. When the Faux Filter Foundation first came out, all of the shade names are named after desserts, after pastries, after flavors. Every last one of the shade. We have Easy Bake, the title. I think of the oven, the Easy Bake oven childhood uh, thing which my mom got rid of every time you go off to school boom you know your parents want to empty out your room empty the garage anyways <laughs> keep getting off track um that's what I think of easy bake oven which is I think what the theme kind of it's a cutesy little title for her actual product I just don't see her as this retro looking 1950s flower stains wife. I don't see her in there baking and smiling. It's just not the image that I feel goes with the brand and goes with Huda. So that I feel is their biggest mistake. To name the powders after dessert themed, the foundation has been also named after dessert. So it's not surprising to me to see the powder match the foundation shade actual dessert theme as well. They go in correlation with one another, not in a sense of copying another brand. The Easy Bake Loose Powder, this is the only product that has a baking theme. If any other prior products had a baking theme to it, then I would have been like, what are you doing? Because that doesn't go with your actual brand itself. Another example, which would have, I think, taken us all by surprise. I mean, she could have gone butt naked, threw the powder on the floor or on the counter, rolled around like a piece of chicken, you know, battering up the chicken, lay down on a sheet and open the oven, put her in. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a joke. But my point is, it's an easy bake, loose baking and setting powder. What theme should we have expected? That is why I feel, based on those facts, or what I feel as facts, I do not feel that the brand copied Beauty Bakery. That is my statement, based on the facts. And I'm looking at the correlation of the prior products, prior uh, patterns, and the names themselves. If all we have to go by is those facts, so to speak, 
it would be silly to make uh, other assumptions and put it out there without really knowing the truth. The only person that really knows, did I really have an inspiration from Beauty Bakery? Do I, did I copy, blatantly copied Beauty Bakery? Only Huda and the brand, of course, know that information. But are they easily going to give up that information and say, yes, I did? Why? Why would you? Why would you admit to tampering? Why would you admit to any of that? Of course you wouldn't. But when again, you look at the actual facts themselves, to me, I don't, I can't make that justification, that actual statement, at least on my channel, and state that uh, the brand has copied this other brand itself, which is of course Beauty Bakery. So that's my statement on that regards and my two examples I would have liked to have seen for the campaign. That is my opinion on that topic, which seems to be pretty buzzed about within the makeup community. Please again, keep in mind it's my opinion. It does not mean that I think less of women, uh, female entrepreneurs, this person's race, this person's religion and so forth. Again, it is just my opinion and looking based on the actual facts themselves or what I feel are the facts. Now it's based on you. Now that you have the information, hopefully to make an informed decision, I hope this review and the additional information has been helpful for you. Let me know if this is something you plan on picking up. If you have additional questions, concerns, perhaps something I might have left out, please leave them as comments. Thank you very much for stopping by and watching and I hope you all have a wonderful day or evening. And as always, I'm going to see you in the next video. I was going to thank you again. That's why I kind of paused, but then I thought, wait a minute, I just did that. I need to go make dinner. Obviously, I'm hungry. It's kind of affecting my concentration. Thank you again, everyone. Good night.